The Lord bless you, sweet family. Well, it's June 28th, 2015. Now that I've introduced scriptural discernment by lots, in other words, using the Bible as an oracle and its little abbreviated form, the Bible Promise Book, published by Barber Publishers, Holy Spirit has prompted me to go a little deeper and really address what you're going to encounter in discernment. Discernment is everything after loving the Lord with all your heart and strength and your brother as yourself. I would put discernment right after that because without discernment, you can't fulfill your destiny or obey the Lord. We can't rely on other people for discernment because they're not walking in our shoes. They don't know what God is doing in our lives. They don't understand the gifts that we've been given from birth and the graces that the Lord wants to give us. So we can't go to other people to discern things for us. At least most of us can't. I've tried all my life to find someone who could help me discern. And I've never really found anyone other than my own husband. And he's really helped me with discernment. But the Lord created that relationship uh, dynamic, especially for guidance and for preparing us for heaven. We prepare each other for heaven by being obedient to the Lord. So it's imperative that we can discern God's will for us, that we don't have to go to someone else who has their own ideas. And that's what this is all about. You know, the Lord loves us so much, and He wants us to obey Him. And He understands that we can't obey what we don't know. So He's standing by always to give us wisdom. In James' first chapter, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously, without reproach, and it will be given to him. And I am continually with you. I have taken hold of your right hand, and with my counsel I will guide you, and afterwards receive you to glory. Psalm 73. Using the Bible as an oracle involves a sacred trust. Holy Spirit is committed to bringing direction into your life. But with that comes the sacred responsibility of obedience and honoring His known will and His word. And the Lord has not dealt thus with any other nation. He declares His word to Jacob and His statutes and rules to Israel. He hasn't dealt this way with any other nation. They don't know His rules. So here in Psalm 147, the psalmist is declaring that we are so privileged to have God's rules and laws as a guide for our lives. In many other religions, people wander around in their lives not knowing what their real mission is. That's not something that's taken terribly seriously in other faiths, but it's taken very seriously in Christianity. The Lord wants you to know your mission and what He's created you to do. And so He's willing to reveal that to you. But you have to seek Him with a very pure heart and a very detached heart. That's huge. Detachment is probably the most important thing next to honesty when you go for a word from the Lord and discernment. You have to be willing to look at it totally from his angle and not your own. This is not a prayer practice that's to be taken lightly. The Lord's extended his wisdom to you so you can walk in his ways. Therefore, you're expected to honor and obey him when he reveals his will to you. So we approach him with the deepest sincerity and respect, expecting him to reveal his will to you. Faith and the expectation that if you ask, that he'll give it to you, is extremely important. He's going to speak to you, and somehow in your inner man you need to be convinced that the Lord cares and that he will speak to you. If you seek him, he's going to reveal his will to you. There is a tendency to open the Bible promises and just read the heading and just run with that. No, that's not going deep enough, guys. 
We need to read the scriptures under the heading. I'm preaching to myself right now. We need to read the scriptures under the heading and listen for that still small voice, for that quiet leading in our hearts. That one particular scripture under the heading that has the anointing. We need to listen with our hearts. Going once is not enough. We need to go three times and see how the words intersect like a puzzle piece put together with other puzzle pieces to give us solid direction. God's ways are not our ways, and at first this may seem very awkward because he's going to give it to you as he sees it, not as you see it. There is a need, therefore, to be open and aware that the situation you're inquiring about may be vastly more complicated than you first thought. Things, people, events, tendencies, they all tie together, and it's not always black and white. The secret is detachment. If we detach ourselves from the answer God gives us, we can't in any way manipulate Him. God forbid we don't want to manipulate God. We listen to Him as God, the Almighty, the One who knows all things. Therefore, our hearts must be deeply humbled before Him, in our minds empty of our own will, and with all our being long for the truth. This transition from human reason to God thinking is not easy. (laughs) We may expect Him to answer us a certain way and be very frustrated when the answer doesn't seem to make sense. One of two things is going on when this happens. First, He's not addressing your question. He's addressing what needs your attention now in present time, what is first and foremost in his mind. Or he is answering you, but it's from his perspective, and you're going to have to work to bend your mind around it. This is where three readings come in handy. They're like navigational points. One describes your location from east to west. The other describes your location from north to south. And the third one describes your location by elevation. In this way, you get a pinpoint of the issue and several aspects to examine it by. So three readings are very important. And of course, if it's a more complex situation with many different facets, you're going to end up using more than three readings. But don't allow yourself to go overboard and just keep getting readings until you get something you like. Uh Uh-uh doesn't work that way. Take very seriously the first three readings that you get and really allow them to sink in. You may have to wait a day or so or a few hours for things to to settle in your mind and, and maybe even for Holy Spirit to help unravel the puzzle for you so you can see it from His viewpoint. So what I want to do now is I'm going to get my little Bible promises out And I'm going to turn to different pages on different headings and explain to you the different times that we've received these readings. And I'm hoping that this is going to kind of give you a head start on understanding what these readings possibly can mean. Some of them are pretty uh, (laughs) self-explanatory. There are 167 different topics in this little Bible promise book, which is about, oh... 169 pages long. The topics are things like anger, belief, charity, children, children's duties, comfort, contentment, God's correction, courage, death, enemies, envy. So it goes alphabetically. Help in troubles, guilt, Holy Spirit, repentance, salvation, seeking God, self-denial, sexual sins, and freedom from sin, redemption from sin, trust, wisdom, work, worry, and worship. So I'm going to go ahead and just pick a few to to give you an idea. The first one in the book is anger. It talks about God's anger here. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. Now when I get this, it usually does not have to do with God's anger. It has to do with my temper rising up. The Lord is warning me, you're going to get angry. And whenever we get angry, our thinking gets distorted. 
And the one that I really like uh, under the heading of anger is, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that rules his spirit than he that takes a city. And a wrathful man stirs up strife, but he that is slow to anger appeases strife. Okay, so it's warning us here not to allow yourself to be controlled by anger. Cease from anger, forsake wrath, and don't fret thinking about how to do evil. A soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So this is a warning not to fall into anger. Okay, if you open to this, and it's the very first reading in the book, I'm going to give you the ones that I get for the most part. I get children's duties sometimes, and that has to do with my own children living up to their part of the bargain as being part of our family. He who keeps the law is a wise son, but he that is a companion of riotous men will shame his father. And listen to your father that begat you, and despise not your mother when she is old. Father of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he that begets a wise child shall have joy of him. Honor your mother and father, as the Lord thy God has commanded you, and my son keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of your mother. And this is interesting with children's duties. This does not mean that you give your life up for your parents' will. This means that you honor them. Some cultures get very confused and think that they have to do everything that their parents want them to do, especially the matriarchal cultures. It's just a given that you're going to do as your mother asks you to do with your life, and that's totally wrong. First comes God. First, you give your life to God. You honor your parents, but you don't obey them in your life path. You obey God in your life path. And there's a lot of misunderstanding and conflict about that. But since it came up, I just wanted to share that, that perspective with you. Comfort, I've gotten at times when things were really difficult or going to be difficult. And the Lord was saying, I'm, I'm going to comfort you. Take comfort. Cast your burden upon me and I'll sustain you. And these things I've spoken unto you that you might have peace. In the world you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. Now, these are wonderful scriptures once you get them to command the situation to flee. In other words, these are arrows these are strong arrows and spears that you can speak to situations and can quote, and these are your strength. You know, if the devil's trying to get you to worry about something, you can speak directly to the problem. It says, cast your burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. But instead, you can say, no, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to cast my burden upon the Lord because he says he shall sustain me and never allow me to be moved. In other words, you can speak right back to that fear and cause it to dissolve. God's correction is one I, I get, and I like that one because right away it tells me that there's, uh, there's some correction going on, whether it be for myself or I'm going through a situation for someone else. I love this one because it's just as clear as it can be. Consider in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to fear him. And blessed is the man who you chasten, Lord, and teach him out of your law. You may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be dug for the wicked. I'm kind of paraphrasing here because this is King James English. And there are different versions of the Bible promise. There are you know, several different versions. So uh, God's correction is wonderful when you're going through a really hard time. <laughs> I'll give you one example. I uh, love this. We were going to a funeral, and we went to the church where the ceremony, the service was being held. And, 
Afterwards, I wanted to pick something up at Walmart before I went to the dinner, the funeral dinner. So we stopped at Walmart, and I kind of had a check in my spirit. Like, you know, you probably should just go straight to the, the gathering, not, not be going shopping. And I thought, well, no, no, I just have one thing I need to get. I'll just run in and get it, and it'll be done. Well, I ran in and got it, and when I came out, <clears throat> I was backing out of my parking place, and another lady was backing out of her parking place, and we had an accident. That is the first accident I've had in I don't know how many years. And she slammed into us. It's like she must have floored it when she backed out. We've got this truck, and we are very, very slow because we're so big. You know, so I was backing out real slow, but she just slammed into us. And to make a long story short, that was a very painful experience. But that was God's correction. In fact, when I went to the Bible Promises, I got God's correction. It's like, you weren't supposed to be doing this. You were supposed to go straight to the dinner that they were having and console these people and be there for them. Instead, you were being selfish and going shopping. See, the Lord, he's pretty... You know, he's pretty upfront about these things. And this is how you learn the fear of God, is when he takes his hand off your protection. You learn to fear that if you don't obey him, uh, things can happen. I mean, he wants our obedience out of love, first and foremost. And I think that's most of the time where I'm at. But when that doesn't work, he has no problems using fear as the second motive anything to get you to obey and to have respect for him, holy respect. So uh, then envy, um, wherever there's envying, there's strife and confusion and every evil work. I've gotten this one when I'm dealing with people, I'm praying for people, and I'm trying to unravel a messy situation. And envy comes up, then I know that there's some jealousy, like even between husband and wife, there's some jealousy going on between them. Then heaven, I've gotten that several times, and this is wonderful because this is about all about the rapture. Actually, this is eternal life is what the heading is. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Well, that one's about the the second um, judgment, but I show you a mystery, we'll not all sleep, but we shall be changed. All of us will be changed. So let's say, you know, the situation I might get this reading, let's say that I've had a really hard week and things are just real difficult and I just don't know if I can stand it anymore. I'm ready, my knees are ready to buckle and I go to the Lord for a rhema and this is what comes up. Uh, he's reminding me in, the, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye that we'll be raised incorruptible and we'll be changed. So he's, he's talking about the rapture and he's saying, just hold on, it's coming, the time is coming when you'll be with me. I know it's hard right now, but the sufferings of this present moment are nothing compared to the glory that will be revealed in heaven. So that's when I get, sometimes I get the rapture other times on the eternal life, I'll get it when someone's died. You know, that the Lord will give me the perspective, okay, this is not so much about dying as it is about them coming to me and coming to eternal life. And that can be very comforting when you focus on that. There's a lot of, a lot of scriptures under this heading that are very comforting. Sometimes when things aren't working out, and I wonder, what's going on? Why isn't this working? Or I'm faced with a really um, threatening situation, like losing our housing or something. And I go to the Lord for Rhema. I'll turn up the faith page. Faith, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but will believe that those things which he says will come to pass, He'll have whatever he says. So this is about faith and trusting the Lord. Watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be strong like men. Be strong. 
So many times when I get faith, I won't so much look at the scriptures. I'll look more at the heading. But, it, you know, have faith. And God's faithfulness is another one. When things are dire, situations are dire, and I don't know if we're going to have the money to fix the car or to buy new tires or whatever. And I uh, go for a rhema and we get God's faithfulness. That means he's got it covered. He's already there. He's got it covered. 